The Skoda Kamiq, it's not quite a Fabia, it's not quite a Karak, but it does sit slightly higher up. And this Monte Carlo edition is on sale at the moment for a little under 34,000 euro. What's the point of the Monte Carlo? Well, it's a nod back to Skoda's rally heritage, but in the case of its modern cars, it means you get quite a nice bit of spec, like decent upgraded alloy wheels, matrix headlights as standard. And if you've never tried matrix headlights before, well, you're missing out because they are just brilliant if you do a lot of poorly lit rural driving. Let's jump in then and give you a look at what the Kamiq looks like up close. So these split daytime running lights, as I said, matrix as standard. The black grille that you'd expect on a sport line. So in many ways, the Monte Carlo trim does represent something of what we've come to, to know from Sportline models. You get these upgraded black and diamond cut alloy wheels. They look pretty nice. Uh, over the front of the left and right wings, you have Monte Carlo, uh, a black A-pillar strip. And same goes for the roof rails, which are very, very practical. Uh, housing on the mirrors, black B-pillar, and that comes around into the side of the, the rear of the car, which also gets black housing for the boot area. Now, this isn't a huge car, but actually, as I found out myself this weekend, it's really, really practical. The reason I say that is I brought the Kamiq camping with me and my young child, and we packed the boot up, and I mean packed six-man tents, the whole lot, all squeezed into the back of the Kamiq without any issue. And even though it was fully laden down, there was actually enough power to carry two of us and all our gear. Breaking up the lower part of the bumper then here with uh, some black sport line, high gloss, a little bit of plastic. The Kamiq and Skoda logos are also in black and you get a rear wiper. Uh, the taillights have got nice still different swooshes and grooves into them as well. Now the boot, for the size of the car, I mean Skoda are famous for their hugely practical boots. This one has a 400 litre boot. Now I did have to drop the seats obviously to get all that camping gear in. And I was left a little bit bewildered by the fact that there was no 12 volt charger in the back. Because Skoda again are so famous for all the little handy nooks and crannies in their boot areas, like the hanger here, like the little straps for tying things down, and these removable dividers that also just house things that, you know, keep things secure. Boot area then features your own spare wheel for actually being able to change it. But something like the Nissan Juke, for example, has got a bigger boot, but 400 liters, it's bigger than the recently reviewed Honda ZR-V on the channel, and it's got more space than something like a Volkswagen Golf or a Seat Ibiza. Monte Carlo models also get this panoramic glass roof that goes all the way back into the car and really gives it a feeling of airiness and makes it feel more premium. Some of the interior enhancements on the Monte Carlo, then you get these racing strips down the center. These came in very handy when I was camping, so when you're trying to raise and lower this bench the seat belts always get caught you can slot your seat belt in there and stops that happening you get double holders here for map not that we use them anymore but you know what i mean and a storage device down here you get your own vents in the back and two usb c and you'll also get an armrest which again is not something you can always assume you'll have on a car of this size more flashes of red then well, it looks like it could be an ambient light. It's not, but during the day, it breaks it up nicely. And there's even a kind of fake looking carbon fiber effect on the door cards and on certain parts of the seats also. You will get a rear camera on the car, but the rear window is not too bad for seeing out either. I'd imagine most people would be happy with the level of foot space in the back of the Kamiq, not to mention how much knee space there is. So what is typically a Skoda characteristic of decent leg room in the rear stands up in the back of this car too. Plenty of nice Monte Carlo touches inside the front area as well, including further strips on the seats, little blitz of flashes of red along the dashboard, the Sportline steering wheel or what looks like a Sportline steering wheel. There's an armrest, it raises up and down, doesn't slide back and forwards. There is one 
12 volt charger underneath there so i was actually able to plug my cooler in manual gearbox in this car your own physical buttons for climate control then there's the screen that has car play reversing camera and plenty of just familiar skoda touches inside you can configure too much with the driver instruments there's kind of two different displays not as many as you get in something like a kodiak for example but the kodiak is a little bit more expensive quite a bit more expensive and as you can hear it there's sensors for parking although what they picked up there i'm not quite sure because i ain't moving you can throw a phone down here you can plug in said phone with two usb c charging options uh, no wireless charging plate here however even over a rocky bumpy surface here the suspension of the kamik manages to cope with it and obviously we're on the larger alloys in this monte carlo trim so even on very rocky unstable surfaces it doesn't have off-road capabilities or you know huge ground clearance but it does manage to do a pretty decent job if you're driving on grass and regularly doing that kind of uh, style of driving what I thought was great about the Kamiq yesterday, even on a long sort of 200 kilometer run, it was achieving the figures that Skoda said it would in 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers. And that was also including motorway speeds, so using more fuel. The steering is light, but it's direct. Uh, the seats are comfortable. It's a slightly elevated seating position. Again, it's not as tall as something like a Kodiak for example and the manual six-speed gearbox there's quite a long throw on it so you're moving the gear shifter quite a bit to change gear sometimes uh, but even at sort of 60 70 kilometers an hour the onboard computer was telling me to change up into sixth and my head was like but we're not really going will it stall but there you go to my a little bit of surprise the one liter petrol engine was coping just fine and being more fuel efficient in six gear at that speed certainly an easy car to drive reasonably easy car to maneuver around city center environments uh, on the school run you're not going to get disapproving tutters because of the size of your car taking up too much space on the road but if you just strictly have two kids and they're sort of you know six seven and above you're going to have rear leg room for them you've got a, a reasonable boot for carrying their bits the three-cylinder engine keeps itself reasonably faint in the background it feels or sounds like it's better insulated than some other three-cylinder engines anyway and you certainly don't notice it as much it's also a fairly quiet car I can't hear much of what's going on outside at 60 kilometers an hour and one of my favorite things about the car is for the speed beeps that are featuring every review at this stage you hit the driver assist button on your steering wheel one click speed warning two clicks and it's off i prefer one click but two is not bad by a lot of car standards so let's hit an open road here now and just see and it's nine seconds to 60 it does get a little bit noisier then actually handles quite well though and all of a sudden we're doing a very decent speed and you know this thing will keep up with most cars uh, as i saw yesterday driving 120 motorways m11 m50 rural roads you know it's not blisteringly quick or anything like that but it certainly you know wasn't lacking in being able to keep up with all your usual traffic within speed limits so it's a good little all-rounder my question though of the Kamik versus the Kamik Monte Carlo is this I love the Skoda Kamiq from a practical point of view. It will definitely house a family of four. Anything bigger than that, uh, and if you're in a stage where you're still using buggies and stuff, 
you might want to have a look at the Karak for a bit more space. And the Monte Carlo trim, which I'm mainly focusing on in this video, is nice, but it's a 4,000 euro premium over a standard Kamiq, which comes pretty well standard. Six and inch alloy wheels, dual climate control, and a lot of the simply clever Skoda stuff that you get in the Kamiq anyway. So you'd really want to like a different color roof, this lovely Monte Carlo red, and some of the flex on the inside of the interior to justify the 4,000 euro additional premium over the standard Kamiq. But you do see these on the road from time to time. Perhaps they'll be slightly more desirable when it comes to the used market as well. But the Kamiq in itself is a great little family car. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.